Hello and welcome to the video. This is a short video showing you how to set up the on-screen display on this thing here. This is a Sparrow V2 Pro. Now I've already done a video where I went through all of the setup steps, the basic setup steps to get it to this point. So if you haven't already checked that out, I'll put links in the description below so you can go through the process. The cool thing about this Sparrow V2 Pro is that it will run both a DJI 04 or 03 system and also crucially a Walksnail system. Now I've installed Walksnail here into the nose of this particular model and I thought it'd be useful to go through it. A couple of people have been in touch saying they're struggling to get this all working. So first of all there is a dip switch here on the top of the Sparrow V2 Pro. That picks which OSD type it's going to be working with. In one position it is for the DJI. In the position here, it's set for the walk snail. Make sure that that is set for the system that you have. The next thing we have to do is a little bit of wiring, and I suspect this is where people are getting into a little bit of trouble. There are three cables that come out of this little connector that's here at the front, and this is where all of the magic happens. There is a black and white cable and a signal cable as well. Now, these three cables actually don't power the FPV system at all. They provide a ground and a signal, which is what's going to go into the HD FPV system to create the on-screen display. It's basically a telemetry stream that goes from the Sparrow V2 Pro into the Avatar or the DJI 03 or 04 unit. And the on-screen display is actually created in the goggles. So the way we need to do this is normally there are four cables that come out the back of something like this avatar unit, uh, ground, voltage, and a transmit and receive. We don't need the transmit pin. We only need the three wires. So that makes it a little bit simpler. So let me just zoom in a little bit closer and talk about what I'm going to do to wire this all together. So I'm going to power my stuff here from the balance tap of the radio. So I've got myself one of these little connectors and I'm going to solder everything onto here. So the way I'm going to do it, I'm going to solder the positive and negative wires to the outside pins on this connector. I'm also going to solder the same black and red wires from the Sparrow onto the same pins. That's going to do all of the power requirements. And then I'm just going to connect the receive wire from the avatar into the signal wire and I'm going to route that along the side. So let me do that very quickly and come back and show you what that looks like. So after a quick 10 minutes of soldering and clipping this is what it looks like. So the simplest thing is that here on the right hand side of the screen we have the signal cable coming out the Sparrow V2 Pro running along the edge of the bay. I've just soldered it together, covered it by a little bit of black heat shrink and it's kept in place by a little thin bead of hot glue just to stop it moving around. On the other side then what I've done here is I have put the negative and positive connections into this balance tap. The way I do it, I actually draw on the side just to absolutely make sure that I don't get that the wrong way around. Um, so that has all been soldered together. Uh, the two lots of wires are twisted together. One set goes into the front, into the avatar. The other runs all the way back into the Sparrow V2 Pro. Now again, the V2 Pro is actually not providing any voltage at all. The main connections here are going to be the signal that runs one side of the bay and the power that runs the other. Um, I always separate those two kinds of wires when I'm doing builds. If you're running wires for any distance, particularly ones that might have the current changing in quite quickly, you can introduce what's called cross talk. So I always have power on one side of my battery bay and signals on the other. It's just how I've always done it and it works great. So the ground and the signal wire. So this is going to be sending the telemetry into the Walksnail unit. The voltage is going to come back from the connector onto the battery balance tap into the Sparrow Pro and that is just used to measure the voltage. That's all it's there for. So now that's all together, we can plug it together and just see if we get anything on the screen. 
So here on the bench, I'm narrating this bit because it's very loud. Uh, the goggles are starting up. I have a fan running on the avatar system so that it's not going to get hot on the bench. You can see here that it's just waiting for everything to be connected. So let me connect the power to the avatar system, which is also going to send the voltage into the port so it can be measured. And we're just waiting now to see whether or not it actually appears in the goggles with both an image and crucially an on-screen display and very excitingly and obviously wired it up correctly because as you can see not only do you have an image out the front of the model but there is an on-screen display overlaid as well which is fantastic so now we know that then we can actually go and modify this osd so that it is only showing the things we're interested in so to access all of the OSD goodness, you need to have the dip switches in the OSD positions for switches one and two. Until now, we've had them in the position for a wing because that's what we've been setting up. However, you need them both in this position, in the down position, in order for the on-screen display stuff to all be accessible and to be able to be used. You can alter the entire position of the on-screen display within the image by holding down the stick in these positions and holding it to the left and to the right. That's the OSD position reset. However, far more fun is when you have everything powered up. You can access the menu of the OSD bits and pieces by flicking the mode switch. Now we have the OSD stuff set. So I'm going to power the model. I'm going to activate everything so I can see what's in the image. I'll record it and then hopefully I'll give you an idea of what we're doing. So here's the image looking in the goggles. So if I flick the mode switch several times, three seems to be the magic number, I get this list of all the things that can be displayed. I can navigate through it by using the pitch stick to go up and down the list. Um, be careful, it might be reversed because you may have reversed the channels to manage things like the control surface direction. But up and down will allow you to select the different pieces. If it's an asterisk on the left hand side, that's just showing you which one you're by the side of. Then you need to move across in the roll control on the radio. That will then select it. When it's selected and it shows a chevron, you can then go up and down to turn it on and off. Excitingly, also while you have it selected like that, if you again flick the mode switch three times, the trick is not to do it too quickly, just do it several times over a couple of seconds, then it will jump into the main screen and allow you to position the piece that you're setting up exactly where you want it on the screen. Once you are happy, it's positioned correctly, you can flick the mode switch again several times within a couple of seconds and it will bounce you back to the list of all the things that you can display. Now it takes a little bit of getting used to, but it does mean that you haven't got to connect anything to a computer and you can have all of these different pieces displayed on your screen and also decide whereabouts on the screen you want them. I've turned the vast majority off. I just want my flight time. Distance might be useful to know. I'm kind of interested in things like my voltage ground speed and altitude are the ones that I've turned on. Everything else I have just turned off. So there is a lot of clutter. I've rendered this using the Walksnail OSD tools. I recorded this in the goggles as I was doing it. And it has been rendered using the Betaflight Sneaky FPV fonts. So just be a little bit aware of that. Um, you will have to take a little bit of time over this. I would recommend if you're going to be doing this on the bench, have some kind of air blowing across the HDFPV system. The way this is supposed to work is that when you launch, the system will tell the HDFPV system that it's flying and essentially arm it which is what you get in the Betaflight iNav and Ardu Pilot world. And that then will turn it on to the higher power for flying. But it just takes a little bit of time. Once you've finished, then you can shut everything down and you are ready to go. Big tip, of course, is to make sure that the custom OSD menu in the goggles is turned on so that you have that ability. And also the recommendation is that you have the font selection set to auto in the goggles as well. I would recommend doing that. Again, I'm just trying to figure out at the moment which of the sneaky FPV fonts that I use here all the time with Walksdale are the best ones for the video to use with the Sparrow system. 
Once you've got it all happy, then of course the very, very last thing you do is you put those two dip switches back, switches one and two, back to where they were before so that it is mixing for the right aircraft type. But hopefully that's been interesting for those of you in how to set this up. It isn't particularly tricky, it's pretty standard stuff, but it allows you to have an on-screen display on your HDFPV system for DJI 0304 and walk snail stuff, as well as potentially others too, and you haven't had to fire up a computer at any point. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.